Hello friends, today is Gandhi Jayanti as in the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi whom the world called the naked fakir and uh, I am reading to you some of his writings. He was a scholar, an eminent thinker, a philosopher and if you read his language you will just be enamored We all are familiar with his dictum about truth, about war violence, about civil disobedience, about cooperation, and so on and so forth with India movement. And there is a lot of literature available on all of these thoughts where he himself discusses, you know, uh, point by point <coughs> the meaning of Satyagraha non-violence and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, right now what I'm reading to you is his uh, reply to the poet, to go. And I would like to just inform that uh, while I am reading so, uh, there's a lot of other literature available that's tempting. Actually, the selected writings of M.K. Gandhi is available online and in mkgandhi.org online, mkgandhionline.org and uh, it has been uh, edited very well, selected very well. There is a very interesting piece of conversation between Gandhi and Lord Lilithko and uh, uh, the very first sentence of that uh, letter that Gandhi has written to Lord Linlithgow, the Viceroy, in 1942, it begins with the sentence, Dear Lord Linlithgow, and uh, I would like to inform you or I would like to bring your attention to the fact that the government of India has been very wrong in implementing such and such measure. And then he goes on to uh, detail the measure. So, but I am going to read bits and pieces of his reply to Tagore, and I am just enamored by the sheer stamina and energy of this person who even fostered in between and uh, who even kept, uh, you know, like a mourn breath, like uh, we won't talk sort of a thing. And I mean the amount of literature that he has written, <laughs> being a statesman and an activist, and I mean Gandhi is above the designation of a politician and a minister. But uh, I love critiquing him on so many grounds. I love critiquing him on his uh, uh, views towards women um, in some Cases. I mean, he really uh, considered women to be um, the equal of men and uh, as colleagues and co-workers. But his uh, his views on chastity, brahmacharya as he called it in Hindi, and his views on uh, experimenting and proving chastity and abstinence from sex and sexual desires is almost lunatic. I mean, it's crazy to do such an experiment, you know. As far as I know, the kind of experiments that he conducted involved lying naked and sleeping at night like that with young women, really young women. Why? And isn't that a torture to Kasturba? And Kasturba's uh, treatment by Gandhi has also been questioned by so many other people. Uh, but uh, Kasturba, it seems, had also protested uh, when Gandhi had uh, forced her almost to clean up in his uh, Dalit campaign the upliftment and the cleaning up of the Dalit campaign. So, there's a lot to disagree with the great saint. There's a lot to agree and admire. But uh, it's important
to just read and admire his language and hear it. I reply to the poet Tagore. The poet of Asia, as Lord Harding called Dr. Tagore, is fast becoming, if he has not already become, the poet of the world. Increasing prestige has brought to him increasing responsibility. His greatest service to India must be his poetic interpretation of India's message to the world. The poet is therefore sincerely anxious that India should deliver no false or feeble message in her name. He is naturally jealous of his country's reputation. That's quite a statement. He says that he has striven hard to find himself in tune with the present movement. He confesses that he is baffled. He can find nothing for his lyre in the din and the bustle of non-cooperation. In three forceful letters, he has endeavored to give expression to his misgivings. And he has come to the conclusion that non-cooperation is not dignified enough for the India of his vision. That is a doctrine of negation and despair. He fears that it is a doctrine of separation, exclusiveness, narrowness and negation. No Indian can feel anything but pride in the poet's exquisite jealousy of India's honor. It is good that he should have sent to us his misgivings in language at once beautiful and clear. In all humility, I shall endeavor to answer the poet's doubts. I may fail to convince him or the reader who may have been touched by his eloquence, but I would like to assure him that India, I would like to assure him and India that non-cooperation in conception is not any of the things he fears, and he need have no cause to be ashamed of his country for having adopted non-cooperation. If in actual application it appears in the end to have failed, it will be no more the fault of the doctrine than it would be of truth if those who claim to apply it in practice do not appear to succeed. Non-cooperation may have come in advance of his time. India and the world must then wait. But there is no choice for India save between violence and non-cooperation. Non-cooperation was a very famous doctrine of Gandhi adopted against the British domination. And we will discuss the specific act against which you know, this was uh, devised. But Gandhi devised so many such instruments or doctrines that enabled this country to diplomatically fight for independence and hats off to him for this. And indeed, let me say that uh, it, Tagore has actually written to him about doubting and even criticizing non-cooperation, what does it say of Tagore? I mean, it is often said that uh, uh, Tagore actually wrote even the national anthem that we sing today in honor of an English viceroy that he actually united the country. We don't know. There are other uh, articles very interesting uh, about a dispute between Gandhi and Tagore and uh, this is 
is an article by Venu Govindu, an August dispute, Gandhi and Tagore, where he reviews the Mahatma and the poet, letters and debates between Gandhi and Tagore, 1915 to 1941, compiled and edited by Sabya Sanji Bhattacharya. So this is how his article begins. If, as Ramchandra Guha remarked, Gandhi was the mother of all debates on the future of India, surely his debates with Tagore rank as the greatest and most profoundly enriching. Tagore and Gandhi, born in the 1860s in two regions, separated by the bulk of the country, were men who came to represent the quintessence of Indian thought and life in the modern age. Living in a period when India experienced dramatic social and political changes, the two drew from the mother load of Indian culture and forged it with their, own, with their own understanding of the Western civilization to invent idioms and creeds that are of enduring value. Sabya Sachi Bhattacharya's work is a collection of the correspondence and public debates between the two men competently put together when the editor was the vice chancellor of Visobharati, founded by Tagore himself at Shantiniketa. The writings start in 1915 with Gandhi's arrival in India after a most crucial period of 23 years in South Africa and end with Tagore's death in 1941. The larger-than-life questions discussed in the book notwithstanding, the dense and particular nature of contemporary events form the essential backdrop. And he is also showing a picture of Tagore and Gandhi and I want to show it with you. Yes, the beautiful. In line with the high quality of his material, Bhattacharya's introduction is a masterly assessment. I am actually reading from uh, this article by Mr. Vane. Using a judicious lightness of touch, the editor lays out the terrain. of the debate and mostly manages to avoid imposing his views and prejudices on it, a most difficult task indeed. And in a short narrative, he erects the scaffolding of the larger political context within which the critical engagement of Tagore and Gandhi was taking place. Out of the many choices the editor had in organizing his material, he chooses a chronological order for the interviewing of the public discourse and the private communications is designed to dovetail these two kinds of writing in the chronological framework of the four different phases into which I have periodized the narrative. This is under quote. So this is a beautifully assessed piece of article where, uh, you know, the, the Star Wars talk about so many things and uh, I think that I will be happy to read the whole thing and read the entire letter of uh, Gandhi uh, replying to Tagore. I think that I will do it in the second half because uh, time is running out and uh, good to read in bits and pieces.